I was really looking forward to the game myself, prepared fantastically and obviously having one player of the season and team of the year, it, like I said, was flying. To this day, that was probably the best day of my footballing career, 100%. In front of my family as well and friends and my mum and mum being up in the, in, the, in the stands and that with my family, you, you can't beat that. Forbes gets up and heads away from Cohen. Bennett wins a great ball. And then gets the uh, return ball, edge of the box, to fire in the corner! Julian Bennett, Forest Player of the Year! The lad born just down the road in the Meadows! Thumps the ball into the net! And gives first blood to Forest on what could turn out to be promotion day! forward to the game myself, prepared fantastically and obviously having one player of the season and team of the year, it, like I said, I was flying. So I was, when, you, when you're actually in that, that high level of performance, you're doing really well, you, you want every game to come. And that's how I remember, one, I, I can't wait to, well, if I did play last time, I, this is my mentality, this is what could have happened. Um, so. Yeah, I went into that game and it was a good start to the game. Noble with everybody back behind the ball. Here's Commons, those look lively early doors. Floats one forward towards the edge of the box. Forbes gets up and heads away from Cohen. Bennett wins a great ball. And then gets the uh, return ball, edge of the box, to fire in the corner! Julian Bennett, Forest Player of the Year! The lad born just down! I remember uh, making a crunching tackle. Um, the balls kind of dropped for him, so I anticipated his touch and went in with a good tackle and won the ball. And yes, yeah, so and just knocked it out of my feet and had a shot. And thankfully, it went in the top corner. I've had a few of them that went out for throw-ins, but on that day, it went in. And like I said, what what a day, what a goal, yeah. The tackle. To be fair, I was more interested in the tackle. Like everyone always says, oh yeah, what about the goal? What about the goal? But the tackle for me, like I probably would have got sent off today. But the tackle, yeah, I love the tackle, and yeah, I got a good little strike on it, and then it went in. I'm getting goosebumps thinking now, um, yeah, scoring the goal, um, and then celebrating in front of the A block. Um, as as a Forest fan, as a Forest player, what? How, how can you beat that? Win, um, receive player of the season, voted by the fans at the start of the game, and then make a crunching tackle like that, then score a goal and then celebrate in front of the A block as a Forest fan. The only way you can beat that is either championship to the Premiership, but honestly, um, to this day, that was probably the best day of my footballing career. 100% in front of my family as well and friends and my mum and mum being up in the, in, the, in the stands and that with my family, you, you can't beat that. Cohen who rides the challenge, no he doesn't quite, Skiverton does very well actually because he went to ground, looked like Cohen had got away from him and then Skiverton just had an extra inch in those legs. Uh, Commons wins it back again and Commons might be through here from Albrod, through ball inside right, Commons through the legs of the keeper, 2-0! That is the reason for us to tune it up. Everybody's at it this afternoon. Here's Jamie Peters for Yeovil, though, towards the edge of the penalty area. It's a good tackle, but Stewart gives it back to Peters, and it's 2-1. Challenge came in on him from Lewis McGugan. Ball, though, broke to, to uh, Marcus Stewart inside the penalty area. He gave it back to Jamie Peters, and Peters virtually walked it in from two yards out. Commons bends down, fiddles with the tops of his socks, now stands back from the ball. It's McGugan, though, who moves first and curls it! Oh, it's another beauty from Lewis McGugan! It's 3-1 Forest inside the first half an hour! 27 minutes have been played at the city ground, and Forest, if things stay as they are at Wooden Road, are heading for the championship. 
crowd were giving some type of reaction like every time results were going their way our way sorry the crowd and you when you're trying to play you can't really gauge things but then you're slapping into moments oh, oh are we being promoted so i remember but i was just trying to think let's just concentrate on winning this game and like you say with them scoring scoring and the, the crowd one minute they're cheering one minute uh, the booing like as in get, well not booing getting anxious and you, you felt all that so to, that definitely had an effect on the game because it's like are we promoted are we not promoted are we going to the playoffs and yeah amongst the whole the whole crowd I think everyone was involved in that game the fans and the players because if re results did go our way we got promoted and Hopefully it did. Morris fans on their feet all around the city ground. The corner's taken short. It's all over! Forest are promoted to the championship with a 3-2 win over Yeovil. It's the eighth time in their history that Forest have gone up. Some fans come onto the pitch to celebrate with their heroes. Those fans may not have enjoyed a vintage season, but now if they care. Getting promoted and this, that summer holiday, the whole time, the whole of Nottingham, I've never seen it. Honestly, it's like promoted, the whole city was on a high for weeks, up until the start of the, the following season. We didn't have to buy a drink for the whole of that summer. And like I said, even till today, people remember that day and it's probably one of the best days at the City Ground since, and hopefully when we do get promoted to the Premiership, we can emulate that again, but I don't think there has been a bigger day. Um, obviously, we've been in the playoffs and at the Championship playoffs and stuff like that, which are, have been fantastic days, but with regards to success and that day and how it's and on a personal level as well and how everything's just player this like I said, player of the season, score a goal and promoted, pitch invasion, family there and the aura of Nottingham, that's hard to beat. came through the, the centre of excellence and I'm sure it was like under 11s and I, I progressed through to under 12s and the 13s and I'm sure it was like under 14s or under 13s I got released um, for a, a number of reasons and so I went back to my local team Medicolts and just started enjoying my football again and playing with my friends and and really it was probably the best thing for me and then I had the chance to move away um, to Birmingham and do my YTS at Warsaw and then um, I had the opportunity to play against Nottingham Forest and started doing well and doing well and then I had the opportunity to come back to Forest and I remember Paul Merson pulling me aside and he was saying oh because obviously he knew I, I supported Forest and I was from Nottingham and he knew as soon as he was going to let me know I was going to be sh straight there and he said oh yeah Forest they've come in for you now and I was like, serious? I, I was absolutely buzzing. And um, so, yeah, he pulled me aside. I was looking forward to coming home. And um, so, in fact, we had a game the, on the Saturday and it was, it was in the January, around the January transfer window. Um, and he was like saying, look, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to rest you for the Saturday because obviously you, you, you obviously want to go to Forest, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm resting you for Saturday, go home. And so I've come home rested at home, absolutely buzzing, gonna tell all my friends and family, and then went, obviously went to sleep. And I, I don't know, I woke up early on the Sunday, and I had a, had a missed call from Paul Merson, and there was a voicemail, he was like, Julian, um, you haven't quite, the transfer hadn't quite come through yet, I need you to play. And I was like, what? Oh. It, was, it was playing Barnsley, so I've jumped in the car, driven as fast as I can to me up at the um, service station. And uh, to be fair, in the back of mind, I was gutted, thinking hopefully it would come through. It wasn't off. It was obviously the ins and outs of the transfer. But obviously, I wanted to play, so I finished. I had a good game. I think I played left midfield as well in that Barnsley game. I had a, had a great game. Um, and yeah, and I remember the game actually. and. I think I missed the car on the way back. I got dropped off at a different point, and a Warsaw fan had to take me back to pick my car up. But anyway, after that game, um, I came came back home and went back to training on the Monday. And he said, "Look, everything's sorted now. So 
and it was back on and I was like, honestly, I, I couldn't, couldn't wipe the smile off my face and yeah, ended up coming over to Nottingham Forest. Growing up as a Forest fan, um, always wanted to play for Forest and play, I was, like I said, gutted when I got released to, from Nottingham Forest and that was it was always my dream to come back and play for Forest and like I said I've had Forest shirts and my family we're all Forest and and it's a genuine thing and I wanted to play for Forest and like I said my dream did come true. I was nervous and but in a positive way and and like I said every, it was a great it was a great um, win for us and it was a benchmark really and it was nice to actually fulfill my dream and make that debut and this is what it's about um, playing for your hometown, hometown club and I just wanted, wanted, wanted it to continue and yeah and I enjoyed every minute. few results hadn't been going our way as well and yeah I can remember it was a, a left foot curler to the top bin <laughs> and yeah yeah it was obviously to get my first goal it's what it's honestly like like I said I don't want it to be sound cliche but that's what it's all about and scoring goals and being a defender and making making those tackles and the fans sh um, chanting your name that's what it was all about genuinely seeing what you've done for the club and what it's meant to you. You're not just pulling on the shirt, picking up your money type of thing. It's, it is a dream come true and every minute that I play for Nottingham Forest, I put my heart and soul into. I remember it was, a, but I was closing the ball down and I'd, it was just a sudden change of direction and the forward n nothing malicious was just as you would do challenging and my own as I've because I've, obviously I've looked at the video since when I changed direction my foot was kind of planted still and I'm trying to change in a, an orthodox position with a little nudge and then obviously my knees give them way and me being the person that I am I'm, I'm trying to play on and so I remember feeling my knee on the change of direction and I was thinking, oh, I could just run it off or stretch it off and then I've gone back on the pitch. And then I remember um, squeezing up and then a ball over the top. And as the ball over the top's coming, I can't, in my mind, I know I physically, physically can't run for that. I don't know how I got to the wall. And I've just ran to the ball, I've cleared it and obviously I've collapsed and I just knew then that this knee ain't too good. Do you know what I mean? And Steve's come on and we've done everything. And to be fair, I should have probably went off in the first instance. So, but me being the person I am, I've I tried to continue. And, but yeah, that, yeah, I remember. And I was, like I said, the start of the season with the hamstring, the collarbone, and now my knee. Come on, I was, I was, I was gutted. I was, I knew, I knew it wasn't something minor. Um, and once we got in, to the, um, into the change rooms, I had to go straight down to the QMC and have it assessed and yeah, we, we thought it was just a cruise ship then but um, it turned out to be a little bit worse than that and the surgeon said, well look, we, we went in your knee and there's a chondral defect in there. Well, what's a chondral defect? Well, the cartilage over your, your bone is, I've had to do this, that and the other and the rehabilitation is completely different. So obviously the medical staff, once I've got back, they've explained and so that's what was um, a big thing for myself because it wasn't just a nine months thing now, it was, well, you can't wait there for four months now, three, four months, so I'm at home now, I, I can't do anything. I just can't put no weight through the right leg. So the muscles just dropped off, everything's dropped off and so, but being home and having the right family around me and 
my friends and the good people. That that's what and good Forest fans come on. I want to see you back on the pitch. That that was fantastic. And so going forward with that, um, okay, well we're doing this. And to be fair, I haven't quite been the same since since my injury, my right my right knee, and I've come back and they've done fantastic. I've got back playing and. Definitely, if I did this anywhere else, I probably wouldn't have played. Obviously, like with my left knee at South End, but um, got me back fit. But it was difficult, and with the chondro defect, yeah, it was more than just a cruciate. And so, yeah, I've had to work immensely. So, like I said, the, the following summer, I didn't go away whatsoever. I was, it was just literally, I wanted to get back playing, and it was just a battle against. The, just working hard on my, re, my rehab and working with the medical team and so that's what um, the latter part really of my Forest career really was really just trying to get myself right and and thank, thankfully to the medical team they, they got me back playing which was fantastic yeah. from Crystal Palace um, I had the opportunity to stay at Crystal Palace and um, so speaking to the manager well if I'm not going to play or be involved the team's doing really well can I stay at Crystal Palace because okay if I've not got quite a future at Forest um, stay at Crystal Palace because I was doing well and they wanted me to stay down there and you no know, I was part of his plan and that's what he said, I want you to come back, <clears throat> you're still a part of the team, you're still a part of my plans and going forward, I want you at the club. So that's what it was, it was frustrating as in knowing I could be at Crystal Palace playing, but knowing a chance to come back, okay I've got some games under my belt now, I can, crack, I can show the manager what I'm about really and give me a chance and that's what, that's what that was all about, that scenario. So I came back to Nottingham Forest and I was in and around the team, I was in, on the bench here and there and possibly through injuries, I could have made a few appearances, but that's what it was. It was really more of preparation for next season. So had um, Billy Davis had stayed, I would have been staying next season. And with regards to the chairman and what was said, I was offered another year at Nottingham Forest. So obviously at the end of the season, we didn't know if the manager's staying, manager's going, and then Steve McLaren came through, didn't he? Um, and so this was my opportunity. I thought, well, a chance to go over to Sheffield Wednesday for two years and just to get back playing again and a new manager coming at Nottingham Forest. Do I really want to go through with Gary Megson knowing what I'm about and going over there? Do I really want to be going through that again and to be honest I, I probably wasn't a part of his plans anyway so but this is where I take my heart off to the chairman he was, he was very loyal and he was a man of his word and if I wanted to stay I could have stayed for another year hindsight my career didn't last long and whatnot I probably could have been still playing at Nottingham Forest but like I said um, the opportunity I, I wasn't a part of the manager's plans and going forward with the new manager and whatever that was happening there. So I just thought it's a new chapter. I want to really crack on. And yeah, so that's why I made the decision. It'll be nice to be back at the club in some sort of official official capacity. So yeah, I'm really looking forward um, going ahead with that. And going forward, I still, I've started my coaching badges and those sort of things. So going forward, that's gonna be really exciting. And especially now with retiring through my knee injury as well, I can still be a part of Nottingham Forest in an official capacity. And I'm looking forward to that. <laughs>